there are certainly going to be interactions where you're going to ask somebody, how are you doing? And they say, fine. And you say, great, and go on about your business. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, but that can't be it. There have to be times when we're asking more than, how are you doing? How are your family? How are you adjusting to Alaska? What are you doing this weekend? You know, how are your finances? What are your plans for school? Those types of questions. What are your goals for the Air Force or when you get out? You know, how is your family of origin doing? Are your parents healthy or sick? I mean, all those questions are really part of who a person is. Um, and you're not going to be able to effectively lead or support those people in a crisis if you don't know the answers to those questions. When somebody dies by suicide is not the time to ask survivors how their parents are doing, how their finances are, how their marriage is holding up, what they do for fun. But if you know those things ahead of time, in a crisis, all of those can be tools that you use to support that person. I think all of this comes down to preparation, to the relationships that occur beforehand. So often, um, particularly when it comes to the topic of suicide, we're crisis focused, where, okay, a really bad thing has happened and we need to intervene and we need to be supportive of the folks who are survivors and who are dealing with this grief. Um, but if that's when our preparation for a suicide starts, then we have not prepared for suicide. Um, suicide prevention and, and, and suicide response really occur much, much farther to the left on the timeline. We need to be developing relationships with our coworkers, with our friends, with our family that are sustainable, that are intact, that are healthy all the time. Because beyond just these types of events, our lifestyle being in the service requires that. We, our, our social networks are disrupted so frequently by PCS, by deployment, by people getting out of the Air Force, um, that doing that work, and that's the work of every airman, ahead of time to have healthy relationships, to be healthy yourself, um, is so important that if we don't do that on the front end, when you get to the place where we are in crisis, it's very, very difficult to communicate effectively. It's very, very difficult to establish ties with someone and communicate to them that they can trust you and they can come to you and, and it's all right for them not to be all right at times with you. Uh, if you do that work on the front end, um, you know, there's, there's still going to be disruption, there's still going to be loss, there's still going to be the grieving process, but just having that intact relationship and being able to have that relationship endure that process um, makes the grieving process for the aggrieved much easier and I think increases the confidence level of the folks who are trying to be supportive because they know who the person is, they know even if we have you know, a negative interaction because I'm not giving them what they need. We've got a relationship that can endure that because we laid a foundation. Mm -hmm. I think it's just really important that all airmen know that suicide prevention and suicide postvention, intervening after a death, is what good leadership is. Uh, I think a lot of times folks will say, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do, and I really think that's a misconception. I think we as airmen, we as leaders, our training is so perfectly attuned to addressing this issue, to leading each other, to being a leader, to intervening in a crisis. And so the skills that we all learn from basic training on up about being a good wingman, about being a leader, about addressing adversity directly and honestly and um, in a way that's thoughtful and prepared, good leadership is good suicide prevention.